Sutra Ananda, suppose the water came from the eastern moon, water then should also flow from all the grass and trees when the moonlight passes over them on its way to the crystal ball. If it does flow from them, why wait for it to come out of the crystal ball? If it does not flow from the trees, then it is clear that the water does not descend from the moon. Commentary Ananda Now you should think about it. Where does that water come from? Suppose the water came from the distant moon. If you say the water comes from the moonlight, that it is the water of the essence of the moon, water then should also flow from all the grasses and trees when the moonlight passes over them on its way to the crystal ball. The moonlight must come from a long way off to cause the instruments to flow forth water. Above it was stated that when the fire passed over the groves and trees, they should burn up. Now the groves and trees should all flow forth. That means water should come out of all of them. Water plays the moonlight passes over. Water should flow forth there. If it does flow from them, why wait for it to come out of the crystal ball? If the groves and trees all emit water, then there is no reason to wait for there to be crystal ball in order to get water. If it does not flow from the trees, if the groves and trees do not flow forth water, then it is clear that the water does not descend from the moon. Then you should understand that the water does not come down from the moon. Sutra, if it came from the crystal balls, then it should flow from the crystal all the time. Why would they have to wait for midnight and the light of the full moon to receive it? Commentary, if it came from the crystal balls, if you say the water flows forth from the crystal ball, then it should flow from the crystal all the time. Why would they have to wait for midnight and the light of the full moon to receive it? Why wait for the arrival of the, of the 15th of the month to seek the water? If it were the crystal ball that emits the water, it should come forth at any time at all. So now it has been proven that the water does not come from the moon and it does not come from the instruments. Sutra, if it came from space, which is by nature about this, it would flow everywhere until everything between birth and sky was submerged. How then could there still be traveled by water, land and space? Commentary, if it came from space, which is by nature about this, can you tell? Where the bowels of space are, can you find them? Since space has no bowels, the water would flow everywhere. If in fact the water came from space, the water would have no bowels either. The nature of space is boundless, and you say that water flows forth from within space, and so water should not have any bowels either. Until everything between earth and sky was submerged, everything would turn into a great sea, and everyone from the realm of people up through the heavens would drown. How then could there still be travel by water, land, and space? Several thousand years ago, the Buddha was already talking about air travel. Though there were no airplanes at that time, he knew long ago that there would be air travel and space travel. He says that even everything, even if everything from the realm of people up to the realm of the gods turned into that, into a great sea, there would only be traveled by water, there wouldn't be any dry land or any space. But this is not the case. Sutra, furthermore, upon closer examination, you will find that the moon moves through the sky and the crystal ball is held in the hand and the pan for receiving the water is put there by someone. But where does the water that flows into the pan come from? Commentary, furthermore, upon closer examination, you should look into it in detail. You will find that the moon moves through the sky. Now it is not necessarily the case that the moon travels through the sky, but that is the way the text describes it. In the final analysis, when the moon travels in the sky, how far does it go in a single step? And how far does it have to travel to get where it is going? Pay no attention to this point. The crystal ball is held in the hand, and the pan for receiving the water is put there by someone. 
the pen was placed there by a person. The moon and the crystal ball and the pen all have a definite place. But where does the water that flows into the pen come from? The Buddha has just asked whether the water comes from the crystal ball, from the moon, or from space. Where then does it come from? How does the water get to the pen? Sutra, the moon and the crystal balls cannot mix and unite since they are far, far apart. Nor can it be that the essence of water exists spontaneously without an origin. Commentary, the moon and the crystal balls cannot mix and unite since they are far, they are far apart. You may say that the moon and the crystal ball mix and unite to bring about the water. However, being so far apart, how can they unite? It's not possible. Nor can it be that the essence of water exists spontaneously without an origin. The same principle holds for water as was stated for the element of fire. It cannot be that the water comes from nowhere, suddenly appears of itself in a pan. There is no such principle. Sutra, you still do not know that in the treasury of the first common, the nature of water is true emptiness, and the true emptiness, the true of emptiness is true water. Pure in its origin, it pervades the drama realm. It of course with living beings' minds in response to their capacity to know. Commentary Ananda, you still do not know that in the treasury of the first come one, the nature of water is true emptiness. The nature replete with water is actually true emptiness, and the nature of emptiness is true water. The nature replete with emptiness has truth within it. Where do you say it comes from then? It comes from the treasury of the first come one. It is found in the true minds of all of us living beings. We are replete with, not only with water, but also with fire, wind, and earth. They are all complete in our minds. Earth, water, fire, wind, emptiness, perception, and consciousness, the seven elements are all complete in our minds. But though they all exist there, they are not mixed together, messed up, or murky. Pure in its origin, it pervades the drama realm. The nature of water is pure at its origin and pervades the drama realm. You should know that within it there is wonderful existence. Within true emptiness, there is a wonderful existence. If you contemplate these principles, you can come to understand them. In other words, when you yourself have Kung Fu spiritual skill, when you sit in meditation and gain Samadhi power and give rise to genuine wisdom, then you can understand, understand that the principles explained in the Sutra are true and not false. But this principle will not be easy to understand now if you are trying to fathom it with your conscious mind. It of course with living beings' minds in response to their capacity to know, whatever the minds of living beings in the night drama realm seek can be given them in accord with their intent. Whatever anyone wants, they can have in whatever amount they need. If you need to drink a glass of water, you are given a glass of water. If you need two glasses of water, you have two to drink. Living beings' wishes are fulfilled in accord with their needs. Sutra A crystal ball is held up at a certain place and there water comes forth. If the crystal balls were held up throughout the Dharma realm, then throughout the Dharma realm water would come forth. Since water can come forth throughout the entire world, there can there be any fixed place to which it is confined? Commentary Where would you say water comes from? The text tells you here. How is it said to be in the treasury of the first come one? A crystal ball is held up a certain place. One person decides he wants some water and holds up the crystal ball and their water comes forth. If crystal balls were held up throughout the Dharma realm, if to the ends of the earth everyone held up a crystal ball to seek water, then throughout the Dharma realm water would come forth. Water would flow from all the billion worlds. All that is needed is some, someone seeking water. Since water can come forth throughout the entire world, 
if it is possible for it to be produced everywhere in the world, can there be any fixed place to which it is confined? If it is where the, everywhere in the entire world, what place can you say it originally comes from? If it comes from a certain place, it can come to me but can't go to you. If it goes to you, it can't come to me. But if everyone holds up the crystal ball, water will come forth to everyone. That is precisely the nature of water in the treasury of the first common, not dwelling anywhere and yet dwelling everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere, but it can also be said that it is absent for every place because you don't. If you don't have the crystal ball, if you don't employ the method, then it's not there. The same is true of the nature of fire. Sutra. It is experienced to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma. Ignorant of this fact. People in the world are so deluded as to assign their origin to causes and conditions or to spontaneity. These mistakes which arise from the discriminations and reasoning processes of the conscious mind are nothing but the play of empty words which have no real meaning. Sutra Ananda by nature, the wind has no substance and its movement and stillness are erratic. You always adjust your rope as you enter the great assembly. When the corner of your sound gati brushes the person next to you, there is a slight breeze which stirs against the person's face. Commentary The Buddha spoke again to Ananda. Ananda, by nature, the wind has no substance. Let me tell you about the wind now. Its movements and stillness are erratic. Sometimes it is in motion, sometimes it is still. You always adjust your rope as you enter the great assembly. When the corner of your samgati brushes the person next to you, there is a slight breeze which stirs against that person's face. Samgati is a Sanskrit word which translates in several ways. It is the many pieced rope, Ta Sui Yi. Because it is composed of 108 pieces of cloth made in patterns of four long and one short, this rope is also called the host rope, Tzu Yi, and the great rope, Da Yi. It is the rope worn by the drama speaking host of the three ropes of a left home person. One is five pieces, one is seven pieces, and this one, the Sam Gati, is the great rope with the most pieces. When you walk by someone, the corner of your rope brushes against them. The rope makes a breeze. As you move by, a breath of air passes over the face of that person. Sutra Does it wind come from the corner of the Kashaya? Does it arise from emptiness or is it produced from the face of the person brushed by the wind? Commentary does this wind come from the corner of the kashaya? Does a breeze that blows across the person's face come from the corner of the kashaya? That is the sangati. Does it arise from empty emptiness? From emptiness, does the wind come out of empty space, or is it produced from the face of the person brushed by the wind? Does a breeze originate from the other person's face? Kashaya is a Sanskrit word which translates as mute colored hoi and indicates that it is clothing uh, it is clothing for getting out of the dust li chen fu Sutra Ananda if the wind comes from the corner of the kashaya your uh, you are then clad in the wind and your kashaya should fly my rope remains motionless and hands straight down. You should look closely at my rope to see whether there is any wind in it. It cannot be that the wind is stored somewhere in the rope either. Commentary Ananda, the Buddha again called to Ananda. If the wind comes from the corner of the Kashaya, you are then clad in the wind and your Kashaya should fly about and leave your body. 
the rope should separate from the, your body. In that case, it would be that the wind came from the corner of the rope. I am now speaking drama in the midst of the assembly, and my rope remains motionless and hangs straight down. Here the Buddha refers to himself as I. I am now speaking drama in the midst of the assembly, and my rope remains motionless and hangs straight down. Take a look at it. You should look closely at my rope to see whether there is any wind in it. You see my rope hanging down. Where is the wind? Is there any wind? It cannot be that the wind is stored somewhere in the rope either. You should not say that there is a place in my rope which harbors the wind and holds it there until it is time for it to blow. Sutra, if it arose from emptiness, why wouldn't the wind brush against the man even when your rope did not move? Emptiness is constant in nature, thus the wind should constantly arise. When there was no wind, the emptiness should disappear. You can perceive the disappearance of the wind. But what would the disappearance of emptiness look like? If it did arise and disappear, it could not be what is called emptiness. Since it is what is called emptiness, how can it generate wind? Commentary If it arose from emptiness, if you say the wind comes out of empty space, why would the wind brush against the man even when your rope did not move? The wind comes from the emptiness, but when your rope is not moving, there is no wind. Why not? Why don't you feel the wind blowing? Emptiness is constant in nature. Emptiness is unchanging and constant in nature, thus the wind should constantly arise. If a wind arose from emptiness, there should always be a wind, since emptiness is constant and unchanging. It should not be that sometimes there is wind and sometimes not. When there was no wind, the emptiness should disappear. The Buddha just pointed out that if wind is produced in emptiness, there should always be wind. The converse is that if there is a time when there is no wind, the emptiness should disappear. Without wind, the emptiness should be obliterated. You can perceive the disappearance of the wind, but that would the disappearance of emptiness look like? But what would the dis disappearance of emptiness look like? When the wind is not blowing, it is still. People can sense this. They have an awareness of the absence of wind. But what would the dis disappearance of emptiness look like? What would it be like if empty space were obliterated? Can empty space disappear? Basically, emptiness has neither form nor appearance. How could it have a disappearance? Basically, emptiness cannot be obliterated. And so the Buddha deliberately asks Ananda this difficult question. If it did arise and disappear, it could not be what is called emptiness. Since it is what is called emptiness, how can it generate wind? If there is production and extinction in it, it is not what is called emptiness. It is what is called form and appearance. For example, wind can move and be still, and that is a kind of arising and disappearing. And so it is considered a kind of form, not emptiness. Emptiness is called emptiness because there is nothing inside it at all. How then could wind arise, wind arise from it? Is there any trace of the wind coming out of emptiness? Any pathway for it? Is that What is that pathway like? There isn't any. This is proof that the wind does not come out of emptiness. Sutra, if the wind came from the face of the person by your side, it would blow upon you while you send your rope in order. Why would it blow backwards upon the person from whom it was generated? Commentary, if the wind came from the face of the person by your side, if you say that the wind arose from the face which is brushed by the wind, it would blow upon you. It makes sense that wind com coming from another's face should blow on you while you set your rope in order. Why would it blow backwards upon the person from whom it was generated? 
How is it that when you straighten your robes, it blows her on someone else's face? If the wind were produced from that person's face, it should blow on you first. Why then, when you adjust your clothes, does a breeze from the corner of your robe blow first onto the person's face? Sutra, upon closer examination, you will find that the robe is set in order by yourself. The face blown by the wind belongs to the person by your side and the emptiness is tranquil and not involved in movement. Where then does the wind come from that blows in this place? Commentary, Ananda, upon a closer examination, you should look into this well. You will find that the rope is, is set in order by yourself. It is you who move the rope. The face blown by the wind belongs to the person by your side. It is another person's face and the emptiness is tranquil. There is no movement in emptiness. It is there as if asleep, sleeping strictly without any restlessness. Even breath is cut off. One could say it was like a dead person, but a dead person has form and appearance, while emptiness has no form or appearance. It is tranquil and unmoving and not involved in movement, whereas the wind blows back and forth, flowing and moving like water. Where does the wind come from that blows in this place? Where does the element wind come from? Sutra the wind and emptiness cannot miss and unite, since they are different from each other. Nor should it be that the wind spontaneously exists without an origin. Commentary. The wind and emptiness cannot mix and unite. They cannot work together. Wind is wind and emptiness is emptiness, since they are different from each other. Nor should it be that the wind spontaneously exists without an origin. Basically, the wind does not have a substantial nature, but if it did, it should not be that its substance arose from nothing. It cannot be that the wind exists without having come forth from anywhere. Where then does it come from? I have told you many times that, and yet you still don't understand, it comes forth from the treasury of the first come one. Sutra, you still do not know that in the treasury of the first come one, the nature of wind is true emptiness, and the nature of emptiness is true wind. Purity is origin, it pervades the Dharma realm. It of course with living beings wise in response to their capacity to know. Commentary, Ananda, you still do not know that in the treasury of the first come one, the nature of wind is true emptiness, and the nature of emptiness is true wind. The accumulated nature of wind is genuine emptiness, and the accumulated nature of emptiness is the source of the genuine wind. Purity is the origin, it pervades the Dharma realm. Within it is a pure origin which pervades the Dharma realm. It of course with living beings' minds in response to their capacity to know. This nature which pervades the Dharma realm of course with living beings' minds in response to their capacity to know. This response and the way intertwine so that each living being in the nine drama realms has its own awareness, its own scope. Sutra Ananda, in the same way that you as one person move your rope slightly and a small wind arises, so a wind arises in all countries if there is a similar movement throughout the drama realm, since it can be produced throughout the world. How can there be any fixed place to which it is confined? Commentary Ananda, in the same way that you, as one person, move your rope slightly and a small wind arises. You move your rope and a breeze comes forth. So a wind arises in all countries if there is a similar movement throughout the Dharma realm. If all the people throughout the Dharma realm moved, they are clothing, then in all countries a wind would arise. Since it can be produced throughout the world, in all places by all people, how can there be any fixed place to which it is confined? Ultimately, where would you say the wind comes from? Sutra It is experience to whatever extent is dictated by the law of karma. Ignorant of this fact, people in the world are so deluded as to assign their origin 
to causes and conditions or to spontaneity. These mistakes which arise from the discriminations and reasoning processes of the conscious mind are nothing but the play of empty words which bear no real meaning. Commentary is experienced to whatever extent and dictated is dictated by the law of karma. The wind arises as a result of the karmic retribution which manifests for each person. But the externalist religions of the world, as well as ignorant people and those of the two vehicles, are so deluded as to assign their origin to causes and conditions or also spontaneity. People without wisdom get confused, doubtful, and they say that the source of the wind is in causes and conditions. People of the provisional vehicle make the same mistake. Adherents of external religions confusedly consider it to be spontaneous in nature. Some think that the wind arises spontaneously. This kind of thinking, this kind of guesswork, these mistakes which arise from the discriminations and reasoning processes of the consciousness mind, of the conscious mind, are all the function of the discriminations and considerations of the mind consciousness. It is nothing but the play of empty words which bear no real meaning. Things which can only be discussed are not real. Does the text say here that this matter is apart from the manifestation of words and speech? It says that adherents of external religions and those of the provisional vehicle can only talk, and what they talk about is without real meaning. None of it is true, not is right.